The Glory of Easter, A Guide for Children Author, Tony Robbins Hopefully when this book is finished, you will have an understanding of why Easter is so special to Christians and how it fits into your life. Okay, here we go. Before Christ Before Jesus came along, in order for people to please God, they had to obey and follow rules that God provided for them. People didn't always understand how to live for God or how to be the type of people God wanted them to be. So God gave them a list of rules. The rules were known as the law. It started with Moses. Moses was told by God to go to Mount Sinai. There, God was going to come down and give his law to the people. However, God's presence, a cloud of thunder and lightning, smoke and fire, descended on the mountain, was so frightening to the people that they decided to stand way back and let God speak to Moses. These first laws are called the Ten Commandments. Here are a list of the commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. The people only heard God actually speak the first two commandments himself before they ran away. Moses brought back two tablets that contained all the commandments, which are sometimes referred to as the Decalogue. Ten commandments don't seem so bad, right? However, God decided that the people needed many more laws to follow. Why? Because he wanted people to understand how hard it was to please God just by following rules. When a person really loves God and has a change in his or her heart, it becomes so easy that these people were hard-hearted and loving God just didn't come naturally to most of them. So in the end, God gave them a total of 613 laws to follow. 613. Wow. I'm sure you can see how hard it was to follow all these rules. The book of Leviticus lists many of these laws. Because most people love doing bad things more than they love God, God had separated himself from the people. They just couldn't come boldly to God. Even in their temple, there was a room called the Holy of Holies, where God's Spirit dwelled and it was closed off by a heavy curtain, sometimes referred to as the veil, that only special priests could enter. Anyone else who entered would die. So, man and God were separated. God wanted his people to love him from their hearts, and he also wanted a way for them not to be separated from him, a way that would allow them to be free from the law and please him. So God decided he'd send his only son to his people to redeem them. After Christ, Jesus was born to Mary and an earthly father named Joseph, but they knew that God was his true father, and he was here for a very special mission, to redeem mankind. It wasn't until Jesus was in his 30s that he started preaching and teaching people about how to please God. And truly be good people. The teachings of Jesus is what we call the gospel or the good news. What is the good news? You'll see. The leaders of the church were not happy with Jesus. He was saying new and exciting things that they didn't understand, nor did they really want to. These leaders had a lot of power over the people, and they didn't want to lose that power. They used their power to make it really hard for people trying to follow the law. The leaders thought Jesus was full of himself and a troublemaker. 
They promised that they would find a way to kill him. They didn't realize that this was all a part of God's plan. Under the law, in order to atone for sins, the people sacrificed animals to God. Jesus was going to become the last sacrifice ever needed. The Jewish people had a holiday which they called Passover. They all came together to celebrate. On this very special Passover, Jesus shared his last meal on earth with his disciples. We call this meal the Last Supper. This is where Jesus had to tell the disciples who had come to love him that one of them would betray him. Judas would lead angry leaders and soldiers to Jesus for 30 pieces of silver and that he would die. The disciples were very sad, but Jesus wanted them to understand that this was God's plan. Jesus, who had never done anything wrong, was going to give his life so that people could come to God freely with open hearts and not have to live by the law. Jesus was making the way for a new covenant called grace. Grace is the free and unearned favor of God that people can have because of the sacrifice Jesus made. All we have to do is repent and believe that Jesus is the Son of God and then try living a life pleasing to God. During this Last Supper, after he said grace, Jesus took some bread and gave it to his disciples and told them, Take and eat. This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took a cup and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. This act of taking bread and drinking in remembrance of Jesus and his sacrifice is called communion by Christians. After the supper, Jesus went with his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane at the foot of the Mount of Olives. He wanted to pray. He was afraid so afraid that he was sweating blood, but that did not stop him. He wanted to fulfill God's plan for us. Jesus was arrested, beaten, and made fun of. The next day he was put on the cross to die. This was called crucifixion. Before he died, Jesus asked God to forgive the people who had done this to him. He said they didn't realize what they were doing. When Jesus finally died, the sky grew dark and there was a big earthquake. At that moment, the veil, remember the veil, was torn. No longer was man separated from God. People could now approach God directly in prayer. Grace is available to all. Three days after he died, his mother and a disciple went to visit his tomb. Jesus was laid to rest inside a cave that belonged to a wealthy man. After they had laid his body to rest, they rolled a really big stone over the covering. But when his mother came, the stone had been rolled away. Jesus was gone. Jesus had risen just as he said he would. This is why we celebrate Easter. It's a time to reflect on the sacrifice Jesus made. It's a time to feel great joy because Jesus overcame death and ascended his throne in heaven. It's time to be grateful that we no longer are held down by those 613 laws. Enjoy your celebration.